Today we're going to share with you how to set up an effective family council without too much complaining. Hi, we're Paul and Vicki Jenkins. We've got five steps for you today. Once you're prepared, a lot of the complaining is gonna go away. The first step in creating a family council is to pick a time that is pretty regular that you can stick to, and then you've got to mm -hmm. be willing to protect that time. Well, there's a lot of things oh, that yeah. come in and try to intrude on your family time. So this is a time that everyone expects that you know it's on the calendar. Put it up on the wall or something right. so that everybody can see it. And there's an understanding that we don't schedule other things during that time. Your family is the most important thing. All of that other stuff can be pushed aside. We need to protect that time. And you're sending a really great message to the children that, that if there is something that important to you, you're going to schedule that time and you're going to protect it. And that's going to be a real challenge, protecting it. You're going yeah. to find that so many things come up. So just be committed to that protection of it. You know, it's just like anything else though. Once you get into the routine mm -hmm. and the habit, people start to expect it and it's just part of what you do. Right. The second step in having an effective family council is to come up with a list of topics because one of the essential elements of a family council is that mom and dad, the parents, are in charge of teaching or sharing or discussing a principle. Now principles are those things that you really want the kids to know or that we adhere to within our family. We're talking about things like honesty and integrity, mm -hmm. but also work and, right. and initiative. So brainstorm a list of topics that you can come up with. It might be a little hard for you to just track all of the elements of this, so we've taken the work out of it for you. We've got a family council agenda. Look at the URL on your screen, drpauljenkins.com forward slash family council, we've already put together an agenda for you. Just tell us where to send it. We'll get that right to your inbox. One of those essential elements, like I said, is that the parents are going to teach a principal. So start a brainstorming list about that. You know, I love the idea of brainstorming because your children probably have some mm. really great ideas of things they want to cover. And you might yeah. be surprised at some of the topics they want to cover. And it might be things that they feel passionate about or have an interest in learning about. And so it gives you an opportunity to explore something that they're really into or to have them explore it and share that with you as well. Just a little disclaimer too. It doesn't always have to be something heavy or, or moral based. It can be education based yes. or interest based. Vicki and I still hold a weekly family council and this week we went online and searched for some documentary material about Israel because we're going to be visiting there yeah. soon and so we wanted to learn about it. That's another example. It could be any topic of interest but here's one of the things that makes this important and effective. There will be times, I promise, if you haven't had them yet, you will, <laughs> when certain topics become more important. Mm -hmm. Maybe one of the kids runs into a bullying issue at school, or maybe somebody slips out and takes the five finger discount on a candy bar at the grocery <laughs> store, right. and we have to have a conversation about it. When you've set it up as part of your family culture, it doesn't become this awkward, uncomfortable moment where somebody's being singled out. It's simply the topic of the week. And it takes some of the urgency out of it in the moment too, because you know you have a time set that you can teach about it. You won't forget it. Right. Step three is to start a list of fun family activities that are appropriate for your family. And again, this mm. is going to change as your family changes too. But get a lot of ideas of activities you can do together to build your relationships, to have fun, to enjoy one another. Once again, the essential elements of a family council include having fun. You're going to see that on the agenda. If we're not having fun, we're doing it wrong. <laughs> And this is a way to engage the kids too, because remember, we're trying to do this in a way that doesn't create a lot of complaining. So making it fun creates a draw for the kids right. and they start to have an expectation that, hey, when we get together as a family, we have fun. So there's teaching the principal, there's having fun. We're gonna get to the other part in just a minute, which is a treat. We're going to enjoy that together as well. All of these elements come together to help to reduce the complaining and create that family culture 
within your family. Vicki, like you said earlier, these interesting or fun activities might change over time. So get the kids input about this and be open as a parent to trying some things. Get down on the floor with them. Have some fun playing together. Yeah, be willing to try maybe a game that they've heard about or an activity that they came up with. We've, we've learned mm -hmm. quite a few activities by just having our kids say, hey, we ought to try this particular game. And it's been mm -hmm. kind of fun. We've talked about brainstorming and making lists. Print out that Family Council Agenda. The URL's right there, so you can go get the Family Council Agenda. Print it out, and then on the back, write down some of your ideas about the activities and the fun things that you can do together and the topics you wanna to discuss. That way you've got it all in one place where you can refer to it quickly, and you don't have to be coming up with it every yeah, week. Yeah. You've already got a list of things that you can draw from. So the next step, number four, is to come up with a rotation to share some of the responsibilities. Mm. We talked earlier about there are going to be topics that your children want to be talking about. They might want to learn and teach something. And so it's really fun for everybody to have a chance to be the instructor or to share their new talents. We've even had family councils where a child has a chance to share, uh, maybe practice doing a book report or yeah. share a song that they've learned to play on the piano. So there's a lot of different ways that they can share what they've learned or to teach and, and you have different responsibilities of who's going to maybe pick the activity or, or the, treat. the treat or the, the topic of discussion. Even small children <laughs> like to feel important. Yeah. And so you're going to get them involved in a way that they feel like they really have a, a contribution to make to this family council meeting that you're putting together. And they feel important, they feel included, and, and they then they get heard. to own it. Yeah, and whenever they're heard, they feel loved. Right. Vicki, I'm remembering when the kids were young especially, but even as they got into their older childhood and teenage years, you had this thing that hung on the wall. I don't even know what to call it. It was a thing. It was, it was this plaque sort of that had movable little tiles on it. And, and everybody's name. And we would just rotate those assignments. So mm -hmm. who's in charge of the treat this week? And then we'd put their name up there. And it, it gave a way for the kids to also anticipate, oh, this is coming up and here's my responsibility. Right. So it really contributed, I think, to their feeling ownership in the process. We can talk about this all day long. Let's do it. <laughs> Jump in. Don't wait until everything's perfect. You've already got enough in place that you can try this. Get it started. Pick that time that you can protect every week. Come up with the rotations. Think of the fun topics and the activities that you can do. You've got this. Step five is to get started. Don't wait. Let's start right now. Part of just getting started is start today. It doesn't really matter what your family makeup is yet. Your kids, you might think, well, maybe they're too small. We'll start when they're older. Or you might think they're too old. They won't participate. Or you might have somebody who's kind of got an attitude where they don't want to hang out and they don't want to participate. Go ahead and start anyway and invite them to come. You're responsible for the invitation, not for the response. Right. As you establish this pattern and have fun together, it creates the draw. So we don't want to have a sense of obligation or pressure right. or uh, that they, they're being forced to come to this thing. We're going to create the draw for it. You give the invitation. If they resist at first or, or they're complaining, that's kind of normal. You, you sometimes get that when you change things up in your family, but stick with it. Continue to follow the agenda that we've provided for you and I think you're gonna have some success with this. We'd love to know how that goes for you. Thanks for joining us for this episode. If you want the next step for a positive family culture, cue up that next video where we'll go into more depth about how we create this at home.